today I'm recording the audiobook for Twitch, so I thought I'd make a little video just to show you what kind of things go into making an audiobook. First of all, of course, I need the book to read. And this is my iPad, and on it I have a program called I Annotate. Now, in the old days, when you read audiobooks, you read them from manuscript pages, and you'd have to pause at the end of each page so that the noise of turning the page could be cut out of the audio track. But nowadays, we read from screens, because I can turn the page without any noise at all, which hopefully means we'll get to be quicker. Now, the lovely thing about I Annotate is that there are these little um, tools along the side which allows you to annotate the book so I can highlight different characters' speech in different colours so I can make sure that I can differentiate the voices clearly. And that will be what I read from. Here, of course, is my very important bottle of water, but inside it, can you see, I've put a couple of pieces of lemon. Slightly lemony water helps you salivate, and saliva is a very important thing when making an audiobook. Of course, I'm going to need my glasses, otherwise my eyes will get tired, and how will I read? So I've got my reading glasses. We're doing this in a time of COVID, so I've got a couple of spare masks, and of course I've got my hand sanitizer. I also have this uh, oil, which smells lovely, and sometimes it's nice to make your studio smell a bit nice. I have brought a lemon. This will be chopped up and put into hot water instead of tea to keep my saliva ducts going. And of course, a notepad and pen. And this, this is my tip from the wonderful actress, Zoe Wanamaker. I used to work at the National Theatre. And when I worked at the theatre, she came in to do some voiceover stuff for us in the studio. And she brought a bag of Granny Smith apples. And I said to her, why have you got the apples? And she said, when you're making audio recordings, the only thing you need are Granny Smith apples because just biting into one will make your mouth full of saliva and you will have as much moisture as you need to make a good audio track. I'm also bringing myself some grapes for the same reason. Here, I've got a little, uh, what I would call Dramatis Personae, which lists all of the people who are in the story and I've got some visual references and some voice references for myself so that I can differentiate those voices clearly when reading. And that's it. That is all I need to go into this little rucksack. So I just need to do some tongue twisters on the way to the studio and I should be good to go. vocal booth. This is what I see when I'm reading. Ah, there are my headphones. There's the monitor if I need to see the producer. There's my microphone and my iPad stand. There's my table where I've got my apples and my lemony water. And through here is the room where the producer sits to tell me what I'm doing bad or good or if I have to reshoot something again. So, let's get the iPad out. Chapter 3. Aves Wood The Aves Wood Nature Reserve was built on an old fly-tipping site. Rare plants grew there because fly ash from the coal mines had made the soil alkaline. And despite the name, not all of it was woodland. Some of it was meadow and a large part of it was wetland. It was a city for insects, a fine dining experience for birds, and Twitch's favourite place in the whole world. You never knew what bird might visit the banks of the River Brid, or choose to nest around the pond in the boggy swamp of the wetland. Twitch entered Aves Wood through a kissing gate beside the canal, which ran almost parallel to the river. Immediately stepping off the footpath, he glanced about, checking no one had seen him, then dashed through the undergrowth, making his way towards the pond, inhaling the heady scent of pine resin and smiling to himself as he trod carefully over tree roots and badger sets, trying not to leave footprints that might lead anyone to his hide. As the ground became mushy and sodden, the trees thinned, 
and he saw the pond stretching out in front of him, its surface shimmering like a mirage in the heat. He heard the mouse-like squeak of an oyster catcher and scanned the reeds for the black and white wader with the long orange beak. But the barking of dogs broke his concentration and he dropped into a squat, peering through a tangle of brambles. He saw two police officers being tugged along by a pair of excited Alsatians on leads. They were 10 or 11 metres away, off the footpath. Twitch was surprised. It was unusual to see the police in Abe's wood, and he'd never seen them with dogs. He sniffed the air, wondering if some of the college kids had started a fire, but detected no smoke, just the comforting earthy fragrance of the woods. Circumnavigating the pond, wary of the deep pools of water around the bulrushes that masqueraded as solid ground, Twitch picked his way across a clearing towards a thicket of trees, relaxing now he knew he was hidden from the public paths by dense foliage and distance. A bone-shakingly loud fud, 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 drew his eyes to the sky as a police helicopter flew over, surprisingly low. Alarmed birds flushed from their nests in the tussocks around the water's edge, called out in distress. Oh, I need to do that sentence again. <laughs> yeah, I got the rhythm of it wrong. Good morning, good morning. It is day two of the Twitch audiobook recording and I am packing my bag again. Now, I don't know if you can see this wonderful cushion here. Well, this is what I forgot to put in my bag yesterday. It is what we would call in the business the tummy gurgle muffler. And I needed it yesterday afternoon after I'd eaten my lunch. So it's going in my bag. I've got my apples. I've got my iPad with the book on. I've got my lucky chicken and I've got the tummy gurgle muffler. Time to read part two of Twitch. Twitch.